I teach third grade here at Waterloo. It's my second year of teaching in general, but also my second year at Waterloo. Um, and last year, I did a project with my class around the revitalization of Waterloo. And our driving questions and enduring understandings were how time changes things and can have a positive or a negative impact and also how you can have a positive impact on your community. So the students um, started out, they decided they needed to look at what does a thriving community look like? What do the businesses look like? And so we took a tour of Auburn um, and they took notes. There were um, business owners who talked to the students as we went around, which was really neat. And they took these notes back and used them as we toured Waterloo to compare what are some things that we noticed that are different, what are some things that we think could help our community. So the students picked one thing they thought would help their community the most, and they did research and wrote a persuasive, which they presented to the revitalization board. And they also submitted their persuasive pieces and their pictures to the board and some of their um, ideas were included in the actual um, final product that was given to the community. So this is one student, Violet, she was in here earlier. Uh, she had wrote about how she wants to see a community center in Waterloo. Um, and we really pushed the students in their writing. Last year she was in second grade and I was very proud of um, not only the writing they produced, but their collaboration amongst themselves, amongst community members, and the research they did. And this is kind of an ongoing project. I just had a community member in Auburn reach out to us, and they would like to, she would like to put a community center in. So this aligns very well to the work that will happen this year with Violet in third grade, because she has a passion for this. And so uh, this is an ongoing kind of thing that, that the kids will have a voice in. So we're excited about that. And then currently, we are in a rocks and minerals project. So we're looking at how are rocks and minerals important in everyday life. Um, the students, these are some pictures from our entry event. Um, Holly Ward from IMI uh, came to talk to the students about what rocks are, what their local company does with rocks. And they even got to make their own rock fossil during the event. So right now, they're looking at um, all of it is standards based, and we also have started including learning targets. Um, so all of these I can statements and more are included on a checklist that the students have. So they know what their learning target is, what their goals are, and as they go they can check, have I mastered this yet? Um, I've also added in this year, because this was a project we did last year and I've gone back as I continue learning about PBL. Um, to change things and improve them. And I've also included some character learning targets. For this project, it's around um, discussion and communication. So the students are practicing learning how to take what they've learned and communicate it to others um, and support their own ideas in a discussion. Uh, some other things I have learned about are adding resources directly into our planning sheet on the calendar and uh, definitely using different resources. So Chelsea Kale is our art teacher here and their final presentation is delivering a poster and presenting to others in the school and around the community about their rock and what they've learned about it. But third graders don't know how to put together a poster. So we're working, I'm working with the art teacher to help teach them how to put together a presentation and how the visual aspect goes. Well, in the classroom, we'll work on um, how they should look. So there are a lot of reasons I love PBL. Um, these are some pictures of the students giving their presentations last year. And it really pushes the students to grow in their learning. And many of the students said they never thought they'd be able to stand up in front of people and give a presentation. Uh, some of them even had it memorized, and um, it just pushed them to a level they didn't even realize they could go to. It's also very hands-on. The students are very engaged. They love interacting 
um, with all of the different experiments, with the articles that we read. Um, and my background before teaching was in the sciences. So having this hands-on experiences that teach 21st century skills and STEM skills is something that's very near and dear to my heart. And so it's something I really love about PBL, and the students love it too. So and I will add on, I was in Erin's room yesterday and she was doing a Google Hangout with a friend of hers who works in mines in California. Yes. in California? Mm -hmm. So it was really cool. It went right into what, how the work that they're learning is applicable to a real life experience. So and they have the scientists right there in front of them. So that was neat. Are there any questions you have for Erin or about PBL or project-based learning or our work here? I have a question since I'm from the chamber. Are the children being highlighted to how they are networking and the benefits that they are? I mean, do they understand that they're actually doing a professional networking by by you bringing them to these different people, helping each other? I mean, that that, that it's a thing itself. Mm -hmm. um, because I, as I see a lot of professionals, which is what I do, the networking and the art of networking is. Is, it was a dying art and it's coming back. And so I'm just asking if that, just understanding that they're doing that as well is, if, and if it's not being highlighted, maybe to suggest it. If it's trying to explain to someone the value of just relationships, outside of social relationships that you do on your phone <coughs> or your tablet, um, are, are huge, are huge, because of, look what you've been able to bring to them because of some personal relationships that you have. Yeah, absolutely. I'm not sure that they necessarily understand it in those terms, um, but we talk about the importance of collaborating and learning from experts and reaching out to people who may know more. For instance, um, my friend who is a geologist, we talked about how we're going to him to learn, um, you know, we're trying to be geologists in our project, we're going to go to him and reach out and find out what is it that they really do. Um, so they are learning about um, how to reach out and collaborate with others. Um, I'm not sure that they think of it in terms of networking yet, but th they're more building those base skills, I think, that help them, will help them to network as they get older. So Lois, I think too, you'll see as we go through the day, we have um, K-12 PBL. And yeah. so as the students Oh, well, this is literally the, network. Yeah, yeah. If, yeah. if it had well, been brought up that they are <clears throat> bringing I, together and making things happen just by the relationships mm -hmm. they're making. Right. And I think that you know, the groundwork is laid here, but then as they get older, mm -hmm. then because you hear kids at the high school saying, oh, well, you could talk to this person, or I remember working on a project with this person, so yeah. that by, by nature, it builds on each other. So the, the Waterloo mm -hmm. revitalization, I, we, we're hoping that's going to be a visual thing that the students can experience. I think it's so, exciting that they're getting involved yeah, now so, and as they move through their yeah. grades. So they they'll get know, to see that. gosh, I had a hand in this, or I remember when we did that. Um, we are going to, outside in this courtyard here, put a greenhouse. And so that'll be another part of a school wide project where each class will have a crop or a, a vegetable, or it might be a flower. And they're hoping in Waterloo to put a farmer's market in. So we would like to participate in that. That's our overall plan to do that. And also at lunch, we, you can eat some of the things that you grow now. It not, used to not be able to do that. So we're hoping that we'll put some lettuce and some carrots and the kids will know. We're going to put a compost box. So those are things that we um, are planning to make them know that what they do matters, whether it's this community or whether it's a larger community. Very cool. I sat in when they presented to the, the town board, and they had amazingly large ideas. Lar um, pool, I remember pool was very popular, but the cupcake <laughs> shop was like number two. <laughs> so we, uh, but they, they are, they're thinking large, um, not just what I need immediately. Well, and there was there job. was the partnership with, with Ball State at the mm -hmm. time, so Tenna was also very involved in that, and so they were able to give feedback to the actual uh, master's students who were developing the plan for the town. So, 
Do each class do we, each of the classes have their individual project? Is there one? Is it just one school project where each grade contributes? These were her projects for third grade. So every grade level has different projects. Okay. So for instance, second grade is beginning to do a project kind of on creating norms, um, agency. She's doing a new project this year. And so all the standards for second grade are embedded. So they'll look at their standards first and then create a project. But all the projects kind of start with knows and needs to know too. Mm -hmm. What so, do the children already know? And so the standards are the, the reading, writing, and arithmetic. Mm -hmm. uh, and then that just, you use a project to drape over that. Well, like the project is the car. That makes sense. So we're going to uh, have yeah. the project go down the road in the car, and then in the car we put all the standards and everything that makes sense to go with that. If that's kind and of their the project visual. changes when they're first graders, it's not right. Like these kids or whoever the kids are that are working on this, right. they're going to work on this through twelfth grade, or they're going to no, just this year. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now the nice thing about the greenhouses, I've already talked to the middle school and high school about giving support, yeah. so they will give us support for that school wide project. Kindergarten is working on a project around senses right now. Um, first grade is, she just finished one on community, and then uh, the other first grade teacher is doing one on kind of fire safety. How can you be safe in your own home and those kinds of things. And how long has the PBL initiative been a part of uh, Waterloo? Mm, that's a good question. Right around five, six years. I think it's about five, five or six. UTEC started at the high school level, and then it's kind of mm -hmm. it's trickled down middle school to then to Waterloo over the, over the years. We have tried really hard to make it an alignment. It is the one pathway. So we did a lot of work last year where our kids went over to the middle school, and the middle school came here, and they got feedback from the students. And they were giving feedback to the students based on either their written or oral communication. So that was a very good thing for our students to be involved with. And I so, Go ahead. Sorry, Steve. Nope. One thing I forgot to mention as we're pulling up, you know, we talked about green initiatives with the propane classes. The next green initiative and being a good steward of our finances is solar. So Waterloo will be our first solar school, mm -hmm. um, which is set to break ground here anytime. So that will be exciting. It will undoubtedly lead to project-based learning, oh, yeah. I would imagine. I mean, it's a great, a great way for the kids to learn, and there will be a nice kiosk that shows um, graphs and statistics as it's gathering energy from the sun and what's that mean and um, just going to be awesome. So this will be the first school in Country Meadow will be second. So just to kind of clarify, in third grade, community is a standard, right? So, so it's a social studies standard. And then it's also rocks and minerals mm -hmm. are a third grade standard. So the standards in science and social studies really drive the project. The teachers are driven by not that they, it's not like everybody does dinosaurs anymore. You know, they're driven by, they're driven by what the standards say that the learning needs to happen. And they're clearly given some creative power on their own merit mm -hmm. to be able, that's what's engaging as a teacher. That's what's engaging, yeah. So One of the key components, excuse me, of PBL is that voice and choice. Yeah. So within the project, we create opportunities that students can have some voice and choice. So that's a, a key piece of so the So what does well. their written communication look like? What does their oral communication look like? Sometimes they'll do slideshows. Sometimes they'll do posters. So So Sherry hasn't really had the opportunity to introduce herself. Yeah. No, so not yet. Yeah, she have, yeah, she's not gonna, yet. She's, <laughs> she's a, she wears a couple hats, so if it, we, we have her next on the docket. But are there any other questions about PBL? She is... A literacy coach, but she's also along with um, Wade Booth gives us some uh, support with PBL coaching, mm -hmm. and so she kind of integrates both literacy and math and instruction along with what that looks like with PBL. Any other questions? With before we move on to sharing yeah. and early learning, right? Sharing, yeah. mm -hmm. you're going to touch on um, now that you've you've kind of you've been at Country Meadow, now you've seen Waterloo. And, so you can see some of the subtle differences in, in the presentations that you've experienced. And so at Watson and at McKinney Harrison, you're going to feel the same sense. Um, within the district with four elementary schools, what that allows us to be able to do is to allow choice for our parents. And so not only are we a district that has open borders and we do allow for out-of-district transfers, to which we get about 200 right now. Each year we have students and families choosing to attend DuPont Central Schools from outside our borders. We also allow families within our district to choose or to apply 
for, uh, to go to one of our four elementary schools. And so these brandings, these pathways, really allow for parents to make a choice on uh, PPL or Leader in Me or IB at Watson, uh, the, the partnership at McKinney Harrison. And each year we're getting more and more of those types of requests from parents who are making a choice what they feel would be a better fit for the branding or for that that the um, different flavor in each one of our elementary schools. So wanted to mention that now, it seemed appropriate, and I think as you've been to Country Meadow, now Waterloo, and you see the other two elementary schools, I think you'll, you'll pick up on that sense of what those differences are. The standards are the same. Standards are the right? same, yeah. The vehicle that we, that we that The vehicle, we it's the car going down the road. road. Is going yeah. to be different yeah. So, yes, Ian. Do you ever have those type of conversations with parents that you, you feel that a, a certain elementary school would fit their child better? I don't know if that may happen in more so in the buildings. I can't say as superintendent that I've had those types of conversations. It's, it's been more so um, presenting the options of choice that parents mm -hmm. may have. Uh, and we, we try to do our best to ensure we can't guarantee transportation, bus transportation right. within the district um, to every location. But there are some where we have some common pickup points that if you live in Auburn it's a, and you can get them to a certain point, we can transfer them the rest of the way. Um, our transportation department is just awesome in that in that regard, and, and many others. But good question. Okay, Sherry. Great. Okay.